Hey guys, I'm Dice Shadow, and I'm here bringing you one of my favorite decks in this game, which is Guardians of Light. So, the thing that I like about this deck is it actually has a lot of synergy. They decided to keep synergy in some of the decks and take it out of some of the others, except it sort of seems like the ones that do have synergy are just way good, and the ones that don't are just way bad. But this one is got a lot of synergy, and it's kind of in the middle. So, <clears throat> one way that they accomplish that is by putting four... <clears throat> sorry, sorry, my throat was a little is a little, will be a little, I don't know. We'll just work through it, but anyway, they've got four core spirit dancers, and this is basically the best card in the deck, so having the best card in the deck be a two drop and putting four of them in it really gives this deck a lot of synergy, so it's a two mana for a zero two. What? Daisho, you're running two mana for a zero two? That's so bad. All right, fine, we'll read the text. Core spirit dancer gets plus two plus two for each or attached to it. Whenever you cast an aura spell, you may draw a card. So. This basically means that whenever you put any aura on it, it just starts getting gigantic. If you're putting aura auras on their creatures like Pacifism, then you can draw cards. And even when you put auras on your other creatures, you still get advantage because you get to draw cards. This card is amazing. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to go through one scenario, which is pretty interesting. It's more of playing against this deck than playing with it. And I've definitely described it before, but we'll go ahead and do it again since we're talking about this card. So what happens, all right, so like you play Core Spirit Dancer on turn two, and then you play Griffin Guide on turn three. When you cast Griffin Guide, you draw the spell. So you're getting the card no matter what. So then your opponent has the opportunity to say Searing Spear it in response or something like that. So um, he could have done that on his turn, but it actually makes more sense for him to wait until your turn because um, you're going to lose a Griffin Guide in response. You get to draw the extra card, which you wouldn't have done if he had done it on his turn, but basically what he's saying is, all right, I want my opponent to discard an aura spell and draw a card. And uh, yeah, that, that's kind of a little bit advantageous. It's really not that much of an advantage because the extra card that they could draw could be like another spirit dancer, and then they'll be in bad shape. But, you know, um, it makes a little bit more sense for them to have you um, lose an aura and draw an extra card. Plus, it also wastes your entire turn. So anyway long-winded, probably nonsensical comments about Core Spirit Dancer. This guy I had cut for a while, but I really just hated the way that the deck performed because this is such an important card in it. This guy is a 2-2 lifelink for two, and normally that's that's like fine, I mean, it's nothing special, but when you're making your guys bigger, this is just one of the things that helps you race the most, and if you can just actually race with this card and go ahead and... Uh, swing in lifelink and while they while they just attack you because a lot of the time then then you're going to be in a much better position because there's only like four cards in your deck that can actually deal with your creatures which is the pacifisms and if you don't have any of them then a lot of the times you just need to just uh go ahead and start racing and and see if you can if you can win and if you're gaining six life a turn and they're losing six life a turn you're not going to lose that race most of the time so johnny sun striker i think is really important and it's something that you really can't cut Next card is Daybreak Coronet, which is a sweet card, and I'm really glad that they decided to include a couple of them. Chant Creature with another aura attached to it. So um, originally I thought that this it was just a targeting restriction, um, so you could only target a creature if it has another aura, but you can actually only put this... I, I mean, if your other creature loses the other aura, then this thing will fall off too. So um, I'm not exactly sure why that is, but that is the ruling and I'm sure somebody will explain it to me in the comment section. But anyway, um, Enchanted Creature gets plus three, plus three, has First Strike, Vigilance, and Lifelink, so obviously two mana for all that stuff is way overpowered, but since it has a restriction that you have to put another aura on it, gives you the opportunity to get three for one, um, it's pretty bad, but since you have all these um, Spirit Dancers and Enchantresses, um, you're, get, you're gonna be able to get that, that card advantage back, so it's really not that big of a deal. Spirit Mantle, Enchanted Creature, Enchanted Creature has gets plus one plus one and has protection from creatures so it's just another way to um, get your creatures through a lot of your auras give flying but sometimes you just don't have them and you need protection from creatures it also helps with pariah in being able to um, drop like a spirit mantle um, and a yeah you can just drop like a spirit mantle and a uh, pariah on one of their creatures and then it, basically all their creatures will just be attacking that one creature and they can't really do much about it Next, oh, get out of here, lifelink. Next is these four pacifisms. For a while, I, I took one out, but I mean, it's so important, and so rarely will you be punished by having an extra pacifism in hand that I think it's worth trying to keep all of them in. 
I think I took one out when I was running a bunch of tutors, but I took all the tutors out, so now I'm, I'm going to be able to have less chance of getting my pacifism, so it's important to keep all them in the deck, I think. Anyway, Nomad Mythmaker, two and a white, white, put target aura from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, attach to your creature you control. Honestly, I don't know if I've ever activated this ability. It just gives me a lot of insurance, and I feel like I'm a lot safer if I can do this. Additionally, a 3-mana 2-2 creature is very fine in this deck. As long as your creatures are f are less than 4, then you're okay, because then you can dr you can play a 3-drop into one of your 4-drop enchantments, which are the most important cards in the deck. Mesa Enchantress, first of all, it follows the same thing as a creature that I can enchant. Second of all, lets me draw cards. Gotta love them. Skyhunter Skirmisher, come back here. Um, you, <laughs> you can just drop this thing and then win the game the next turn. So many times that... It, it, that just happens so many times that it's really hard to not play your double strike creature. Honestly, it would have been a little bit happier if they had given me something like Silverblade Paladin, which is just a 3 mana 2 2 double strike, or 2 2 that soul bonds for double strike, which means that if it's soul bonded to a creature, then they both get double strike, and I'm, whatever, I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna describe how that works. But anyway, sweet card, you can just kill them so quickly, and it has built in. Um, evasion, which is always nice. Pariah. Super powerful card. You can just drop it on one of their creatures to kill one of them. And Fog for a turn. You can drop it on one of your creatures, like a Spirit Dancer that's gigantic that they just won't be able to kill. Uh, buy you some time. When I was running Indestructibility, you can have like the super infinite combo that they would have to draw a, a spell that can actually kill an indestructible creature before they can even do anything to you. So, yeah, it's a really powerful card. Griffin Guide. One of the only three mana enchantments that actually do something positive for your creature. So you just drop this on a Spirit Dancer after playing it on turn two. Swing for four damage, it's out of burn range, and if they even do manage to kill it, you get a 2-2 two -two flyer. I really like Griffin Guide in this deck. Unquestioned Authority is probably one of the weaker cards in the deck. It does give you evasion, it does draw you a card sometimes too if you have a Spirit Dancer or an Enchantress out, so that's pretty nice. It's also a 3-man enchantment, so you can drop it on curve with a Spirit Dancer. So, I mean, it's pretty bad, but because of all those things, I think it's good enough to keep in. Then there's Dawn Elemental. Um, you can't deal any damage to it, so Prey Upon doesn't work, and Burn doesn't work, which means that two of the decks can't even kill this card, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, and then Seraph of the Sword, which is only preventing combat damage, which is okay, still. Um, definitely worth running in the deck, but it's certainly not as powerful. And then I'm just going to talk about these two the same. Um, the next two cards as the same one. Two white white, enchant creature, enchant creature gets plus four, plus four, flying first strike, and as an angel. When enchanted creature dies, angelic destiny is returned to its owner's hand. So uh, that's a little bit different than Rancor, because Rancor is whenever it goes from the graveyard to the battlefield to return it. So that means if it gets unsummoned, if it gets exiled, any of that kind of stuff, it'll still go back to your hand. But this one, it only will go back to your hand if a creature it enchants dies. But anyway, that plus um, armor dissension, which is enchant creature, enchant creature gets plus one, plus one for each planes you control, and has flying. They both basi basically do the same thing in this deck, which is just make your creatures gigantic and flying and help you win the game. Then, this is this is basically the second reason why I think this deck has so much synergy, is they included six of this card, <laughs> basically, in the deck. So, really, you're just trying to play early creatures, and then play these things. And you just have a game plan every game. And there are also unique games where you can draw your tutors, if you decide to run them, and you can um, figure out what exact card you need for each exact situation. Your Spirit Dancers allow you to draw cards. It's just a really interesting deck, and it's really, I think it's my favorite one in the, in the game. Not necessarily because I like playing it the most, or because I think it's the best. It's definitely not the best, and I don't know. I just like playing it. I always enjoy the games that I have. It leads to the craziest games. You've seen a couple of them. I've uploaded them where uh, <laughs> where you just I just needed to draw this exact card, and then I got my infinite combo going, and then... I eventually managed to turn the game around, even though it looked very, very grim. But anyway, retether, return each aura from your graveyard to your battlefield. Only creatures may be enchanted this way. This is kind of like, oh my god, everything just, everything is going to shit. We lost, we lost everything. All of our auras are in the graveyard. This is a terrible day, and then you can just drop retether and win it. Sigil of the Empty Throne is sort of similar. Um, if you drop this card and you just start playing enchantments, then you can often just win the game that way, and that's pretty sweet. Uh, I guess I should read it. Um, whenever you cast an enchantment, 
put a 4-4 white angel creature with flying, to creature token with flying onto the battlefield. So you just, every time you cast an enchantment, more 4-4 flyers. That's really good. And then I decided to include one 3 dreams. It's really, really slow, but a lot of the times if you can just curve into it and still have an extra land, then the next turn you can just drop a 4-drop enchantment and a daybreak coronet on a creature, which is pretty sweet. Man, this card... No, I'm trying to figure out... Never mind, it, I'm, it's not going to be worth explaining. Anyway, Lifelink is the one card that I wish I could fit into this deck, but I don't really have a spot. Maybe Retether should come out and Lifelink should come in. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's good with, with uh, tutors. I don't have that many tutors left in the deck. But a lot of the times you just need Lifelink on a Core Spirit Dancer in order to win the game. And I mean, you do have the two Daybreak Coronets, which is which is pretty good. And you also have a Johnny Sun Strikers, which already have Lifelink. But sometimes you just need Lifelink on your creature, or you need another Aura so you can play the Daybreak Coronet, get the extra power. Play the Six Pride I had at the beginning, but they just gave us too many good DLC cards. It's nice to have another two drop that I can actually use, but the keywords are really important, and this thing doesn't have any. It's just a 3 1. So, decided not to go with it. Divine Favor is just not good good enough. It doesn't do enough. Gaining 3 life is largely irrelevant. Plus 1, plus 3 is also just not relevant enough for me to keep it in. I had Aramancer in for a while, but, I mean, as as I was mentioning, the insurance cards almost are never used. The Retether and um, these Nomad Mythmakers. Where are they? Nomad Mythmakers. I almost never use these abilities, and the same was true for Aramancer. And it always felt like a waste um, for trying to put it in. And, uh, like, if I played it before there was any ores in the graveyard, it always felt like a waste. I, I just don't think that the card is very good. And I don't think that you guys should run it. I mean, it just doesn't do enough in the in the format. Um, Staff of the Sun Mages, blah, 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 doesn't do anything. Or of Silence is interesting. I wonder if people actually run this card and see it to good effect. If it was, like, cost opponents one more to cast and one less for you, then I would think about it. Because then I can just drop Spirit Dancer into... Aura of Silence into... Well, no, that wouldn't even ramp me. I don't know. Maybe not. But, yeah, I don't really like it that much. This thing is, like, weird, bad removal. Your opponent's creature has to be uh, a one-toughness creature, and then it's like, you don't really care, and it's not like you can even kill a champion of the parish that's unpu unpumped, because it, it kills minus... It, it doesn't do any. It gives positives to white creatures, and then plus one plus two is obviously not good enough. I didn't want to run it for one mana cheaper, and one three, and you gain three life, so. Yeah, Guardian's Mage Mark is interesting, especially since it's got flash, so you can sort of counter burn spells sometimes against your spirit dancers, you'll gain three toughness, which is good. It also gives all your creatures that are enchanted plus one, plus one, so it's not just the creature it's enchanting, which is kind of interesting. I just didn't think it did enough. Idyllic Tutor was just a little bit too slow, so I didn't like it. Johnny's Chosen just didn't really do that much. Um, it's a 4-mana 3-3 three, three ground guy that, I mean, yeah, you'll play Auras and it gets, or Enchantments and it gets bigger, but, I don't know, I mean, it gets more, it starts pumping out more dudes, but it just takes so long for this card to actually gain your real advantage that I just didn't like it that much, so I ignored it. You know, another Pride, I don't know why this one's in the deck, there's only 16 creatures here, I don't, I really just don't get it. Seasoned Marshal is not that good, your creatures can gain, um, evasion pretty easily, you don't need a 4-mana 2-2 two, two to do it. This card is just a lot worse than Master of Diversion 2, which is kind of interesting. Sigil of the New Dawn. They keep putting this card in the game, and I don't know why. It's just not, not an effect that I want to be doing. Indestructibility. Probably somebody's going to say, Daisho, you're an idiot. Don't run the card. I just don't find it necessary. I've tried it before. It's fine. Sometimes it wins you the game. Sometimes it doesn't. It's not really worth running, in my opinion. Plus three, plus three. Hmm, do I want plus three, plus three, or do I want plus four, plus four, and flying? Or plus seven, plus seven, and flying? Yeah, I think we're going to take plus seven, plus seven, and flying. But in all seriousness, um, you just don't need another one of these effects. You already have six of them, and uh, this one is just a lot worse, so I'm not going to run it. Heart Beast is sweet. You get to look for an aura, put it in your hand, and it's also a 2-5 that you can just, like, equip up pretty easily, and it's vulnerable, or it's not really that vulnerable to to uh, burn, so that's always good, but, yeah, not that good. Or, or it's just not useful enough to put in the deck, because you don't really need 5 mana tutors. I'm running 1-3 dreams, but um, that's only because it really, really wins you the game, this one. It definitely helps, but I mean, if you if you do this and then the next turn you tap out and you play your giant aura and they have a removal spell for you, then you're gonna feel a little silly. You just spent two turns that they were just able to deal with with like a two mana spell. Anyway, Dawn Strike Paladin, Vigilance Lifelink, 
Um, also, five mana does nothing. Three dreams I already talked about. Evangelize. Gain control of target creature. I've never even read this card. They get to... It's like bad, super bad mind control, but it has buyback. I'm not paying nine mana. <laughs> um, Admonition Angel. I just don't think it's very good in this format. There's so many removal spells, and it just dies to basically everything, so... Once it dies, they get their or they get their permanence back. It like exiles permanence. Is that what it is? Yeah. Purity. I don't really want six drops in this deck. There's no real reason to. Oh, by the way, the reason why I'm running 24 lands is because I want to hit my four drops every time on time. And I know my curve isn't too high, so I probably could get away with 23 or 22. But it just really, really makes sense because I want to make sure that I can hit my land drops on time. Or touch mage just is a little bit better than. Totem Guide Heart Beast, but not much, because you can still just drop a 6-drop and they can get rid of it. Celestial Mantle, I think a lot of people run this, but I don't really see why. <laughs> um, if, I'd rather my 6-drop enchantment, instead of putting my game, the game out of reach for them, I'd rather it just kill them. I'd rather run True Conviction, to be honest, but I just don't have enough creatures for it to be worth it. Like, Double Strike and Lifelink, well, I can just give my creature a plus 3, plus 3, First Strike and Lifelink, and Vigilance for 2 mana instead of 6. I don't really need that. And then Final Judgment is random... Mass removal? Eh, that'd be interesting to give a try. I actually just never even thought of running this card. But your deck doesn't run that many creatures, and sometimes you can just be getting overrun, and then all of a sudden you're just like, well, I got seven cards in hand because I've been drawing cards all game, so why not? Swipe, uh, we, uh, sweep the board. Yeah, you know what? No. Well, well, you should definitely try that out, though. I haven't, I haven't ever tried this card, and I think that it could actually be pretty sweet in this deck. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Um, stay tuned, I, I got some gameplay, I got like four games with, uh, with this deck, and I think that they're pretty interesting, so I hope you guys enjoy this video and enjoy the next one. Have a nice day, bye!